Hey, good morning. Like millions of others, my Facebook wouldn't come on this morning. And it took me, uh, Facebook was out for a good hour. Uh, for, it took me to get logged on. I finally figured out how to do it. Uh, there may be some tricks to it. You, you can possibly, they, they, they logged everybody out and you have to log back in. If you forgot your password, you're in real trouble. But you can take your picture or if you have another device, you can log in with that. But if they logged out both devices, then that's what happened to me. I had to figure out another way of getting in. So I don't know how many people are going to watch this. To be quite honest with you, it's live. And, but I'm going to do it in faith anyway. I think it's important. We're in 1 John, and we're talking about how to have fellowship with God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and with other believers, how to have authentic fellowship. Uh, what is fellowship anyway? Fellowship is, is not just a social interaction. It's when you center your conversation and all your activities around the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what true authentic fellowship is. When you do that, John says, you're going to receive joy. And I'll never forget when I was in Italy uh, some years ago, and I'd be hanging around with all these dynamic, spirit-filled believers from all over the world. And we would just talk and hang out, and we'd go and pass out tracts. We'd go door-to-door -door witnessing. We would have tent campaigns in the middle of the marketplace. Um, we'd eat together, and, I, so, so, and the, the fellowship was unlike anything else I had ever experienced. I've experienced much of that since, but authentic fellowship is something that requires three different things. I've already mentioned to you two of them. One is to walk in light. Okay, and that's what John says. If, if, if you want to walk and have deep fellowship with other believers and with God, you got to walk in light. Basically, God is light, and what he's saying is you got to walk in truth. Okay, for many years, I did not walk in truth. My mind was programmed to think uh, and believe a lot of things that weren't true, to uh, have a worldview that was not uh, biblically centered. And, and so I didn't walk in truth. I walked in darkness. The opposite of light is darkness. And so John says, if you want to have authentic fellowship, you got to walk in light. God is light. If you walk with him, you're going to walk in the truth. Second thing is, if you want to have joy and fellowship, is you have to confess all known sin. Okay? And in doing that, when we do that, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We have a clean slate. There's nothing that can rattling in our closets. Okay, and the way we're able to do that as we confess our sins is we have two things in our favor. One, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our advocate, as I talked to you about last time, he's, in a, he's, he's always pleading our case as an attorney before God the Father, as Satan is accusing us. And Jesus has never lost a case, ever. Okay, so he's the top attorney than anybody could ever have and with him as our attorney and defender you know if God is for you who can be against you am I right okay second thing is propitiation and I talked to you about what that that's what we also have in our favor propitiation means that what Jesus Christ did on the cross satisfied God concerning his wrath towards our sin he said this is enough Nobody else has to do anything anymore. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that has not been appropriated to you. You need to say, Lord God, I'm a sinner. I know I deserve judgment and hell, but I'm going to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins, and he satisfied your justice. He was my substitute. He went in my place. 
The minute you do that, the angels in heaven rejoice, you're born again, and a number of legal things happen to you which you may not even be aware of. Okay, But you become a child of God. You get a new nature. Now, that's the next step. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. And not just a few verses. Let me read them to you. And um, it, it's in chapter 2 of 1 John, verses 2 through 6. That's all we're going to do. Uh, now, by this, we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself to walk just as he walked. Okay, so what he's saying here is in obedience that we first of all walk in light, confess our sin, and that we're obedient. Okay, now this pertains only to those that are born again. Those that are not born again are not in the circle. You've seen that uh, the fuckers or fuckers and the father's talking about who's in the circle. Okay, well the circle is only for the family those that are born again. Okay, and that's what this passage of Scripture is addressing to believers. And the, the ones that are not in the circle, they're lost. They're the liars that he talks about here. If they say they're doing this, like I shared in a parable a couple weeks ago with the tares and the wheat, they say they're doing it, but they're not. They're liars. They're false uh, Christians. Uh, ones they have a lot of all the lingo they even perform acts of, of uh, goodness but in fact they don't truly belong to the Lord Jesus Christ they're outside the family but those of us that are in the family obedience when when leads to grace let me explain that to you. Look, what he says here, we know that we know. When you're obedient to the Lord God, I mean completely obedient, If we can, he says, I, I know him. If you say that, you know, that, that word know comes from the Greek word gnosko. And let me explain that. It's, it's a way of knowing that's intimate. It's experiential knowledge, okay? It's something that you're assured of. You're talking about assurance of salvation. This is how you can genuinely know that you're born again, that you're saved, that you're a child of God, that you're on your way to heaven. It's because when you're obedient to him, you get that intuitive knowledge because you're spending time in fellowship with God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that intimacy, as you're being obedient to Him by walking in truth and having uncon no unconfessed sin in your life and obeying everything He says, that intimacy that you get from that gives you the assurance that you know that you know that you know. Okay, A lot of people have they're not sure of their salvation. Most of the times, it's because they're in disobedience. They're walking in sin, or they're trying to straddle the fence between the world and Jesus too, and it just doesn't work. So there's a difference between eternal security and assurance of salvation. Eternal security is a doctrine that says, once saved, always saved. And that is absolutely true. Assurance of salvation is more a subjective thing. Okay. If you're born again, but you're walking in carnality, you're not going to be so assured, okay? Because a lot of that is subjective feelings. I don't, I wonder if, and you get those doubts and all that, and Satan has a foothold in your life to bring confusion. But those that say, hey, you know what, I'm obedient, 
I'll do what God wants me to do. They're kind of like the Pharisees. Uh, you know, they all show and tell, but there wasn't any re reality in their life. And, and John says, they're not only lost, but they're liars. Now, let me explain this to you. There's, there's t two sons and a father. One of the sons decides to stay home with the father. The other son leaves and goes off for many years. And they grew apart in their relationship. The, the son that went away and the father that stayed. They grew way far apart. Where they, they weren't so much acquainted and came to understand each other the way they could have or, and as they grew together. The other son stayed at home. Helped his father with his work. They enjoyed meals together. They talked about life together. They did things together. And you need to understand this. That did not change the relationship. The son that went away was still a child of the father as much as the child that stayed home. What it affected was the fellowship. One went out of fellowship, one stayed in fellowship. Who do you think benefited the most? Let, 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 me, let me share something with you. And Manny, how can you talk about sin? Well, uh, and disobedience, I'm very experienced at it. <laughs> I have a lot of experience. Plus, I have a sin nature. Plus, I was trained in Bible school and seminary about Hormar theology, which is a big doctrinal word of, for sin. Okay, I have a lot of experience in failing and coming back and asking forgiveness and doing all that. But the most important thing I've learned about sin and confession is this. When you sin as a believer and you've been disobedient, as you see here, you begin to grieve and quench the Holy Spirit. When that son stays at home, and he's got that close relationship with his father. And he does something that he knows his father isn't going to like. That grieves him to no ends because it affects their fellowship. And their joy leaves until that thing gets restored, which is what God wants to have happen every time. As soon as possible. Satan doesn't want it to happen. He will keep animosity and families and people apart. But God loves it when brothers dwell together in unity. Christian brothers and Christian sisters, families. Remember, when you work towards reconciliation and peace, that does a tremendous thing in your heart. In your heart. And that's why he says here is that, but whoever keeps his word, truly the love is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in Him. So what happens? As you're obedient and you grow closer to God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, you come to understand grace. Grace is the ability to accept people and forgive people the same way God did with you. You know? And that's where your joy is going to be most complete. I think it was Corey Ten Boone that said this after she had been lost some of her family members in the Holocaust and had herself uh, been subjected to suffering in concentration camps. How she said to forgive is to set a prisoner free only to realize that the prisoner was you. And then she tells the story of years later after she was liberated from the concentration camp as one day she was going to a church and there standing at the door greeting people was one of the cruel guards that she was under while she was in Dachau in one of the camps there, Nazi Germany camps. And her sister died in there and some of her other family members. And she said she stood there for a long time looking at that man. He didn't recognize her, but she recognized him. And she 
slowly reached out, grabbed his hand, and forgave him. And that's when she thought that famous saying, to forgive someone is to set a prisoner free, only to realize that the prisoner was you. People, when you're obedient to God, when you're walking in truth, and you're walking in light, you're going to have true, authentic joy and fellowship. You know what else? God's going to bring other like-minded people around you. When you're around people that don't want to be obedient, they don't want to walk in truth, they're always rationalizing, they're always uh, beating around the bush, they're always doing other kind of things, you can pretty well tell that they're either lost, they're liars, or they're in carnality. Okay. God bless you. Uh, do the right thing.